Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. William Holden in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite dramatizes an astounding experience. A man and a machine flung at a barrier of sound. It's called The Outer Limit. Our star, Mr. William Holden. One hundred thousand dollars. That's a lot of cabbage, Harlow. That's a lot of cash, Hap. And it's all being given away in the great Autolite family charity drawing. You see, if you're one of 25 persons selected, you will name your favorite church, hospital, or other local or national recognized charity for a big share of this huge sum. What's the hitch, Harlow? No hitch, Hap. Nothing to buy or try, nothing to solve or write except your name and address. And it's a privilege to hear what Judge J. Raymond Tiffany, president of the National Society for Crippled Children and Adults, says about this Autolite family charity drawing. Autolite is giving everyone a chance to be good to himself by helping others. I hope that you will register in this drawing, and whether you are selected or not, I hope you will remember that America's crippled children need your help. So, friends, visit any of the following Autolite family car dealers. DeSoto, Hudson, Plymouth, Studebaker, Dodge, Willis, Nash, Packard, Kaiser, or Chrysler. Print your name and address on a registration form at any of these showrooms, and your favorite recognized charity may share in $100,000. Thanks to you. And now, Autolite presents transcribed The Outer Limit, starring Mr. William Holden, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. Minus 25. Zero minus 25. All right, men, settle down. All right, let's settle down. Hey, you too, Bill. That book you're reading, put it away. Anything you say, Colonel. Well, all of you probably want to know why we took you out of whatever warm beds you were in. Well, we've got a reason. The RJX-1. Yep, that's right. The RJX-1. The top, top secret experimental rocket jet aircraft. Now, this morning, Bill is going to take her up and beat her to death. And I can't impress upon you men how extraordinary this flight is. An eight rocket ship... Uh, that's what I said. Eight rockets. Eight rockets designed to take men into areas of space that have never been explored before. And at a rate of speed to which no pilot has as yet been subjected. Chuck Yeager has already flown twice the speed of sound. Today, we hope... Well, Joe? Yes, Colonel? You lead the F-86s. You and the other three jet boys will be Bill's chase planes. We want observation at 35,000 feet. Yes, sir. Zero hour is 0900. Joe, you and your jets will take off at zero minus 15. Got that? Yes, sir. Your F-86s will make conventional climbs to 30,000 feet. Rendezvous and call in to me at control at 35,000 feet. Right, Joe? That cuts it, Colonel. Okay, you and your boys go unwrap your F-86s and have a nice time. <laughs> oh, uh, Bill, uh, stick around. I want to talk. How are you feeling, Bill? Real good. How are you feeling? Uh, what about Molly, the kids? <laughs> you worried, Hank? Don't worry. Well, I just want to know. Just how are they, that's all. Well, an hour ago, Molly wiped her hands on her apron and kissed me, and the twins want to be firemen. Zero minus 20. Zero minus 20. What do you got to worry about? Okay, okay. Hank, look, I've been flying for a long time. I know, I know, I know. But never for this speed. Never for this altitude. I, uh... I've been eavesdropping, Bill. The engineers are whispering that... that you could break out of the stratosphere in this plane. Look, Hank, I've studied the engineering drawings. I know them like a prayer. My brain is crammed with detailed specifications and estimated performances. And I know all the safety devices to keep me alive. Now, you happy? Come on, let's go. Let's get out of here. Sure. Zero minus 17. Come on outside. Zero minus 17. Uh, let's get to the hangar. Uh, Bill? Yeah? You've uh-huh. got ten minutes of rocket fuel. Get rid of those jets before you fire the rockets. Fire only, only one, one rocket, rocket at, at a time. Uh-huh. Oh. 
Hank, look. I'm going to fly that baby higher and faster than anybody ever did before. Just like you said. I'm going to take it up and bring it back. Then you come home to dinner with me, huh? There she is, Bill. Pretty, huh? Real pretty. Look, kid. It's okay for dinner tonight. <laughs> Great, Hank. I'll be listening in on the public address of control. I won't bother you until you're airborne. It'll be between you and the tower until then. Zero minus 15. Zero minus 15. Okay. It's you in the plane now. Frank will take you both out to the run. Uh-huh. Close the canopy, kid. I'll see you later. Good luck. Minus three. Zero minus three. Warning, Colonel. Oh, Mr. Hargrove, you'll be here at control with me? Yes, sir. Major Westfall's been assigned a special radio channel frequency of 397. Uh, Hargrove, oh, I've got a thing on my mind. Huh? That boy in the plane you geniuses designed, he's my best boy. It's our best plane, Colonel. It better be. Now it's your turn. What have you got on your mind? Everything's in proper order, Colonel. The recording equipment, the television cameras, and the cockpit, everything. Every known scientific device. Even We're talking about a man, Hargrove. That's all I really want to get back out of this. What about the man? Well, there may be one difficulty. Tell me about it. I'd like to know. The takeoff. With all that load, the jets, the rockets, all at maximum fuel capacity. It's never been tested that way before. Go on, Mr. Hargrove. It's just that Major Westfall has only 6,000 feet to get his ship airborne. If he accelerates from zero to 160 miles per hour in 6,000 feet, he should be airborne in seven seconds. Seven seconds? That makes it zero plus G. Yes, Colonel. Beyond zero plus G? Well, beyond that, we don't know. We, we just don't know. Thanks. Thanks for everything, Mr. Hargrove. I'll try the switch now. Okay. Tower. Any change in weather? Tower to RJX-1. Barometer reading 29.7. Set your altimeter accordingly. RJX-1 to tower. Roger. Tower to RJX-1. Wind 15 miles from south. Take off runway to 7. Runway to 7. RJX to tower. Got it. Zero minus 130. Zero minus 130. RJX to control. Over. Control to RJX-1. Go ahead. This is just for you, Hank. Cabin pressure Okay. Oxygen pressure okay. Hydraulic pressure for landing gear okay. Fuel pressure safety lock. Zero minus one. Zero minus one. RJX to crew chief, over. Crew chief to RJX one. Go ahead. I'm ready to fire. Hold it. Okay. All set to fire. Clear? Clear. Starting right jet. Starting left jet. Zero minus 30 seconds. Tower to RJX-1, over. RJX to tower, go ahead. Western Airlines convoy reported over Ventura. Got it. Zero minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, RJX 10, to tower, ready for takeoff. Nine. Tower to RJX-1. Seven. Clear for takeoff. Six. Good luck, Bill. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Zero. He's rolling. He made it, Mr. Hawker. Yeah. RJX to control. RJX to control. Come in. Control to RJX-1. Go ahead. Everything's great, Hank. It's a doll, baby. How fast are you climbing, kid? 1,700 a minute. Airspeed, 550. Call me 20,000. Heading 
rating is 87. Everything real good. Come in, Hank. How do you feel? I like it here. Pressure okay? Pressure okay. F-86 leader to control. F-86 to control. Come in. Control to F-86 leader. Go ahead. F-86 observing RJX-1. He's really towering, Colonel. Over point X, 35,000. On schedule, Joe? On schedule. RJX to control, RJX to control, come in. Control to RJX-1, go ahead. 40,000 feet, Hank. Still a doll, baby? Still is, ready to pressurize. Can you hear me okay? Coming in fine. Pressurized. Ready to prime rocket system in five seconds. Primed. Dropping right jet. Dropping left jet, all clear. Good luck, Bill. Firing number one rocket. Fired. Oh, my aching back. Firing number two rocket. Fired. Hey, Hank. Okay, what is it? Bill? Bill, are you receiving me? Control to RJX-1. Come in. Come in, RJX-1. Hello, Bill. Come in. Control to F-86 leader. Control to F-86 leader. Come in. F-86 leader to control. Go ahead. What about it, Joe? F-86 observing RJX-1. RJX-1 at approximately 60,000 feet. Maintaining a heading of north-northwest. You barely make him, Colonel. Try calling. Okay. F-86 leader to RJ- RJX-1. Come in. Come in, RJX-1. Come in. F-86 to RJX-1. F-86 to RJX-1. Mr. Come Hargrove. In. Yes, Colonel. F-86 Share it to with RJX-1. Mr. Hargrove. Come in. Come in. Sit here and run your F-86 fingers through your hair RJ-X1. and wait and think about it F-86 and share to RJ-X1. it with me. Come in. F-86 to RJX-1. Come in, RJX-1. F-86 to RJX-1. F-86 leader to control. Come in. Go ahead, F-86 leader. We've lost him, Colonel. Stay up there, Joe, for as long as you can. What do we do now, Colonel? I just told you, Mr. Hargrove. We wait. RJX-1 to Hank and all you people anywhere. Hope you can hear me. This is Bill Westfall approaching 210,000 feet. That's 40 miles straight up in the air. And that's where I am. You never saw anything like it. No clouds and a color no one's ever named before. Otherwise, nothing. Nothing except... No, nothing at all. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, there is something all right at 2 o'clock high. Really something, brother. Maybe a flying disc. This one's huge. It's spinning around like a top, and it's coming toward me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Listen. Listen. Something just happened. Something, a missile or or shot maybe through the canopy. My pressure's going down. Something's happening to me. That disc thing, I'm being pulled toward it. I've lost control of my ship. I've got no control. Going through decompression. On the verge of unconsciousness. Blacking out. Back. Can you hear? Autolite is bringing you Mr. William Holden in The Outer Limit. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Excuse me, sir. Uh, aren't you Harlow Wilcox? Yes, sir. And aren't you honoring Dodge on suspense tonight? We sure are. We're privileged to salute Dodge as a distinguished member of the Autolite family. But uh, who are you? Why, I'm your friendly Dodge dealer. Thought you might like to know more about the dependable Dodge for 54. Well, I sure would. Well, this latest Dodge is also the greatest Dodge. It's powered by the famous Red Ram V8 engine. And it has established no less than 196 official 3A records. More records than any other car has ever held. In the latest mobile Dodge topped all other eights entered. 
And now the dependable Dodge has been selected as official pace car for the famed Indianapolis race. And that, Mr. Wilcox, is the Autolite equipped Dodge for 54. Well, thanks, Mr. Dealer. Autolite is proud of its long association with Dodge and Dodge dealers everywhere. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. William Holden in Elliot Lewis's production of The Outer Limit, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. May I make a suggestion, Colonel? What? Give it up. No use waiting anymore. Make your report to Washington. What about you, Hargrove? Well, to be frank with you, Colonel, in another 16 months, there'll be another plane, the RJX-2. And the Army will give us another man to fly it. Not until we're certain about this man. And we're not certain. Well, what do you propose to do? Things that are in the manual. We'll organize search parties. Put spotter planes up in the air. Maybe Bill came down in the ocean. We'll call in the Navy. Colonel, if the RJX-1 came down in the ocean, it'd sink in five seconds. It had no life preserver equipment on it. The added We'll weight... call in the Navy, Mr. Hargrove. All right, whatever you say, Colonel, but my guess What's is... your guess, Mr. Hargrove? My guess is that sometime, somewhere on some beach or in some field, someone will pick up a piece of torn metal. And that someone will be holding what's left of the RJX-1. Seklon, you are aboard the space patrol ship S2J3. Am I in communication with you? Can you understand me? Are we in contact? Can you understand now what I am saying to you? Yes. Yes, I... I understand you. I understand. Earthman, your brain is in turmoil, is it not? It has great difficulty in accepting what you see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Accept it. What you see here exists. All this? This exists? It exists, Earthman. The spaceship you are on exists. Those jet dynamos you see before you exist. Jet dynamos driven by the harnessed power of a thousand suns. Listen, Earthman. Listen to them. <laughs> ourselves 10,000 miles into space. What do you say to that, Earthman? I... I don't know what to say. You are aboard space patrol ship S2J3, and I am a guardian of the galaxy, the guardian of the universes. What puzzles you, Earthman? I... I can't... I can't see you. I... I can feel that you're... you're here, but I can't see you. There is no necessity for you to see us sufficient that we communicate with each other. But talking to you is like... Well, it's not like talking. It, it's as if it was all happening inside my brain. It is. That is how I am reaching you, by telepathy. Do you remember what happened to you before you blacked out? Yeah, I... I think so. There was, there was a sharp sound, like... Well, like a bullet hitting the canopy. It was not a bullet. It was a ray was necessary to stop your flight. We have so much to tell you. First, first tell me about my ship. Is it lost? No. It is such a crude little ship, easy for us to repair. It will be returned to you. And you will return to Earth because you are the Earth's only hope of survival. Hope of survival? What do you mean? I will show you. What you see before you is a panorama of your own universe, far greater in scope than an Earthman has ever seen before. Observe. Observe where the line is pointing. Planet 3, star 5, galaxy C, sector K. Is... is that the Earth? That dot, that speck you see revolving in the vastness, is your sun. A star whose surface is 12,000 times that of your Earth. Your Earth is not even visible here. How did you know we even existed? We first became aware of your planet when we found atomic dust in the upper atmosphere. We traced it to your Earth. 
We determined that you were setting off atomic bombs. That is why the Galactic Council has quarantined you. Quarantine? I... I don't understand. How... How are we quarantined? We have sealed off your planet from the rest of space. We have surrounded it with a force screen. When that screen has accumulated enough particles of atomic dust, your Earth will explode. Your civilization, you, all life, will disappear forever. Listen to me, Earthmen. Listen. We have had our almost destroyed our civilization. But we have finally outlawed war throughout space, including Earth. Now listen carefully, Earthmen. If you continue to make atomic bombs each many times more powerful than the last, and if you start making war with them, exploding them, it would upset the balance of the entire universe, throw all space into chaos. This, of course, we cannot allow. And the force screen with which we have surrounded the Earth will prevent it by exploding the Earth itself. Remember then, Earthman, if you start an atomic war, the Earth will at once be completely destroyed. Yes. Yes, I, I understand. Warn them, Earthman. Earthman, you will rise from your seat and open that door. Descend those stairs, Earthman. You will now enter the chamber to your left. There is your ship. Get into it, Earthman. Are you ready, Earthman? Yes, I'm ready. While we were communicating, the patrol ship has returned to where we picked you up, and now you will be propelled toward Earth. Close your canopy. Open aperture. Warn them, Earthman. Warn them. Fire! RJX-1 to tower. RJX-1 to tower. Come in. RJX-1 to tower. Come in, tower. Tower to funny, man. Are you loaded, kid? How did you get in on this frequency? Listen, this is RJX-1. RJX-1 coming in for landing. Give me landing instructions, over. Tower to funny, man. Impossible that you're RJX-1. Get away from the area. Area cleared for Air Force practice approaches. Bill Westfall and RJX-1. Come on, kid. Give me landing instructions. I have no fuel. I'm gliding. Hey, yeah, I see you. Wait a minute, I'll restrict the area. Okay, Bill, go ahead. RJX-1, approximate six miles north of field. Clear area for ten miles. Being cleared. Roger, coming down. Hi, Hank. Phil! Now, Phil, listen. what? Joe. Yeah? Have this ship checked thoroughly with a Geiger counter for radioactivity. Then seal it and mount a 24-hour guard over it, and then report to me. You sure? All right, Bill. What happened? Hank, Hank. Now, listen, you won't believe it. You've got to. I know you won't believe it, and it's going to knock you over. Well, now, just take it easy, Bill. Uh, we, uh... We better have Major Donaldson look you over. No, 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 no. Now, listen, I'm, I'm all right. Listen to me, Hank. Hank. They said the earth would explode. They said it was the end for us. They said... Bill, come on. Let's get over to Major Donaldson's. You don't believe it, do you? Read it like an order, Bill. Major Donaldson's. Well, that's, that's the story, Major Donaldson. Uh, Bill, these men from Mars... I didn't say they were from Mars. 
Did you hear me say anything about men from Mars? No, no, you didn't. All I'm trying to tell you is this. Whoever those people were, they know all about us. Everything. About our wars, about our atomic bombs. They've got us quarantined. Quarantined? Yeah, quarantined. They've, they've sealed us off from the rest of space. I told you... Our atomic bombs are a danger to the universe, so they've, they've seen to it that we'll be destroyed, blown up. How do you like it? All right, Bill, roll up your sleeve. No, no, no forget it, Major. I, I, I'm i going over to the club and tie one on. I'm sorry, Bill. Not tonight. Let the Major give you a hypo. Look, Hank, I've got a drink coming. Lots of drinks. Later. Right now, sleep. Go ahead, Major. Come on, Bill. The sleeve. Yeah. Yeah, Okay. Yeah. You'll be okay in the morning. I'm okay now. Yeah, sure. We'll leave you here, Bill. It's all right if Bill sleeps here tonight, isn't it, Colonel? Oh, sure. I'll see you in the morning, Bill? Uh-huh. Maybe you'll believe me then. You'd better. Come on, Major. He, uh, he'd be okay by himself, Major? Well, he's been under a strain, but he'll sleep. I'll talk to him tomorrow. Tough. But don't worry, Colonel. He's a strong boy. Best nerves I've seen. I'd say things will be all right. Delusions like Bill's latched on to... Delusions? Well, certainly. Major, when you make your charts for Bill and diagnose him and treat him and do all the things you have to, when you do that, Major, consider this. Yes? How did he keep that plane in the air for ten hours? For ten hours, Major. When he had fuel to last him only ten minutes. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. William Holden. Friends, this is Harlow Wilcox again to remind you of the $100,000 Autolite family charity drawing. If you're one of 25 persons selected, you will name any charity you wish for a big share of $100,000. So if you'd like to help your church, school, or other recognized charity, such as the National Society for Crippled Children, Sign up tomorrow at any of the Autolite family car dealers. There's no obligation. If you're 18 years or over, fill out a registration form and have the dealer sign it. You may help the recognized charity of your choice to share in the $100,000 total. You can enter the Autolite family charity drawing at any of these car dealers. DeSoto, Hudson, Plymouth, Studebaker, Dodge, Willis, Nash, Packard, Kaiser, or Chrysler. Next week, the story of a man who had a dream, and in the dream he killed a snake. When he awoke, he found he had murdered his wife. It's called Murder by Jury. Our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is transcribed and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The Outer Limit was written by Graham Dore and adapted for suspense by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. Featured in the cast were Edgar Barrier, William Johnstone, Jack Crucian, High Aberback, Joseph Kearns, Jerry Hausner, and Charles Calvert. William Holden can currently be seen co-starring with Ginger Rogers in Paramount's Forever Female. And remember, next week, Mr. Herbert Marshall in Murder by Jury. This is the CBS Radio Network.